Good morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good morning. You can bring the music. Good morning, Facebook family and friends. And Temple of Faith of God, the church family. God bless y'all this morning. It's a good morning to worship and serve the Lord. Thank him for waking me up this morning. Clothing me in my right mind. But our mind stayed on you. It's time to get hungry for the word, saints. It's time to have that hunger and thirst after righteousness where you can be faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to lift him up and we come to magnify his name. For he is so worthy. He's so worthy to be praised in this hour. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come humbly submitting ourselves before your throne room of grace and mercy. We come to lift you up and we come to magnify your name. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for our life, our health, and our strength. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those that are been caught up with the COVID-19, those that are going through and those that have gone through with family members dying. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you comfort them and that you give them peace and that you strengthen them for this hour that we're going through. We're living in the last and evil days and we need your help, we need your leadership, and we need your guidance. And Father God, we come asking you to hide your humble servant behind the cross at Calvary and that you speak through me to your people what thus said the Lord in this hour. Father God, we ask that you open their ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Give them this hunger and thirst after your righteousness whereby they might be filled and wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of your Son Jesus, which is the Word of God. And Father God, let the meditation of my mind and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray this prayer, and we thank you, Lord. Amen, amen and amen. And Father God, we thank you. We hope that when this word goes forth with power, somebody might ask, what must they do to be saved, delivered, healed, sanctified, and set free? In Jesus' name, we pray, and we thank you, Lord, again. Amen, amen. and amen. Scripture reading is coming out of the book of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He has had a heart for the, for the Lord, and he tried to tell the people and warn them. Watchman on the wall is in Ezekiel, but he was a watchman as well, because he was a prophet, major prophet, that came to warn the people and telling them to get it right. Asking them to wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. Future glory. He's going to be speaking to the children of Israel about their backsliding and their wickedness. And how the Lord wants to bless them if they repent. God is calling us back to repentance. Uh, this is the second message of the future of glory and the conditions upon repentance. Repentance is the conditions of God being able to be in your life and to protect you. Like Psalms 91, a thousand is fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come now to you. 
and he never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. These are what God will do for his children that are obedient in the blood of the Lamb. We, the scripture reading is coming from Jeremiah 3, 12 through 19. Jeremiah 3, 12 through 19, and it reads, Go and proclaim these words towards the north, and say, Return thou backslide in Israel, said the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, said the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Remember he told us to be angry and sin not. God is telling us his will and his ways, what he likes and what he dislikes. The Old Testament conceals, the New Testament reveals. What thus said the Lord? Who he is, the DNA, what he likes, his attributes. 13. Only acknowledge thine in iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord. 14, turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Some people are going to get saved out of your family, and some ain't. Some's going to hold on to the devil, the old way, the darkness. They're going to not like the light. 15, this is uh, the crust of our message of the future glory. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. This is the under shepherd. This is the people that he sent for you to teach you, to, to, to inform you. He does not do a thing unless he reveals it to his prophets first. 16. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, said the Lord, they shall say no more. The ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it. Neither shall that be done anymore. The old way of doing that is going to be ceased. He didn't come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. Once he saw it fulfilling, he started doing a new thing. And that new thing is not fleshly and carnal. It's not in meat or drink. It's in righteousness, peace, and joy, and the Holy Ghost trying to get you into the kingdom. The kingdom of God is spirit. It's a spiritual thing. He told him, Nicodemus, you must be born again. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to, that, to the name of the Lord. To Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their own heart, evil hearts. And not lean on to their own understanding. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. What I promised your fathers is sitting here waiting for you. They couldn't enter in because of faith. You can because of faith, because you have faith. But I said, how shall I put these among, put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a godly heritage of the host of nations? And I said, 
Thou shalt call me my father and shall not turn away from me. You're going to do this new commandment. You're going to love him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, their minds, and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. This is that new bringing in that new kingdom. Remember John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. This future glory, man, this future glory he's going to give us. He was promising the children of Israel. He's giving it to us now. We're supposed to walk therein. We got two or three generations but don't know their God. And we have failed. Because apostasy. Apostasy happened then. This is way back in Jeremiah. and talking to the children of Israel. A great falling away. Apostasy. Great falling away. It always has been happening. Great falling away. A generation or two will be clinging on to God because of the, God puts them in positions of, of uh, what, uh, testing and trials and tribulations. And they cry out and God brings them out. We are the same thick necked people. We're just doing it in the spirit now. But some are, never reach that point. Some are still carnal. Some are still walking like the Pharisees. When the 400 years that God just stopped talking to his children at all. And, 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 and left to their own devices, man is not good. When man is left to his own devices, we see what this world has succumbed to. You see what this United States has come to, leading to their own understanding. The evangelicals dropped the ball, and they're the biggest growing Christian group in this United States. And they dropped the ball. They chose a Saul rather than judges. And you got what you got. And thank God for Psalm 91. And I'm holding on to it. Thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it won't come now to you. Hebrews 10 and 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Is Jesus Christ written in your mind and in your heart? Do you love him with all your mind, body, and soul? you got to love him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And you got to love your neighbor as yourself, whether he's a heathen or not, whether he is a homosexual or not. You still got to love. You can be angry about the sin, but you got to be angry and sin not. God is going to do a wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Last week's message was the same thing. God is showing himself in the Old Testament, how he operates, and doing the spirit, how you can operate. How you can operate. Because you've got the spirit of God in you. The same way. You get angry at what Donald Trump is doing, but don't sin. Keep loving. Don't let the, 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 your uh, love wax cold. In this hour, that was will be happening. You know, love will wax cold if you let that hate set up in you. And you got to cast that out. Casting out all imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And God is love. Even though he gets angry, he still loves his children. 
He still tries to operate with them and show them a better way. And he's going to show them a better way. All things work together for our good. You look at Joseph in the Sunday school lesson. His son, his children, you could imagine what he thought when his brothers bowed down to him and the, 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 the light switch went off and he didn't know what to do. He had to, he had to start crying. He cried. <laughs> Man, the dream had come to fruition. Part of that dream. Daddy got to come. He got to, daddy got to come. And his, his brothers bowed down to him as the dream said. And man, God, keep your dreams. Hold on to your dream. But don't forget, we're living in these last and evil days, and you got to have to step up your game plan. you got to go after God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And you got to love your neighbor as yourself. And you got to be a blessing. I was listening to uh, a preacher friend of mine's daughter. And she about the same age as my granddaughter. And she was telling me she had moved back home and she's setting up this uh, uh, realtor. And she was talking about in a year's time, she wants to hope that she can give a house away. And she was telling her telling us about the principles of uh of the kingdom uh and uh the, the principles was that she doesn't own anything she's just a steward of it god blessed her with it to be the steward man that's the kingdom principle that's what we're supposed to be all about We've been blessed to be a blessing to everybody that needs it and comes in contact with us. And we got to be able to be there when the time comes. She says she's supposed to be a Miles Monroe. That's she quoted him as uh, her teacher uh, when she got this teaching from. And I know her father, he loves him some Miles Monroe and. Me and him and went to a couple of seminars together, but she was she was on point. She, had, she could teach that. That I means young girl. She got the she got hold to the principles, and she's gonna do real good. She's gonna prosper, and uh, I hope if if she keep hold to those principles, and we building this kingdom of God, we got to hold on to those same principles. Praise God. Bless his holy name. Ephesians 4. No, 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 no. We're not there. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 26. Be angry and sin not. Don't forget. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't get that, uh, that angry with anybody. Don't forget that you have to be responding now. You in the spirit. You walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because the flesh, when he gets angry, it wants to hurt somebody. It wants to react. Somebody slap you, first react. Bam, you want to hit right back. The response. The response, the, the, the Sunday school lesson two or three weeks ago. And I got to keep holding to that because I'm a re reacting person, not a responding person. A responding person works from the Holy Ghost. A reacting person works from the flesh. And you got to separate the two. You got to denounce that. When it rises up, you got to cast it down and trot it underfoot. But you got to respond. And the only way you can do that responding is you got to let the Holy Ghost lead and guide you. And how does he do that? Is by you letting him take control. Don't respond. Don't just be slow to speak and quick to hear. Quick to hear. Slow to speak. Hear first. Quick to hear. 
not quick to speak. And once you do that, once you master that, that came out of my Sunday school for me. The, 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 that was for me. I'm always, they don't have to finish the, the I'm wanting to jump in and, and tear them down. Slow to speak. Quick to hear. God bless you. Let's go to the scriptures. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return thou backslide in Israel, said the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fail upon you. For I am merciful, said the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. He's a merciful God. How many times have we have gotten in the situation where we know we did wrong and we deserve the punishment that's fixing to befall us and we cry out to the Lord? How many times have we done that? The children of Israel have done that. He shows us in Scripture and boy, do not, I'm, like I say, I, many days I don't sit up there and, Lord, this, this hangover is killing me. I feel like a death warmed over. Please, Lord, take this pain from me and I won't do it no more. Please. Next week, right back at it. Over and over. <laughs> and you can imagine God's anger. Knowing where he has called me to be. And this is at the age of 16. And I didn't come in until the age of 47. So, man, how many times when he was merciful unto me? I was hearing on the radio this morning, they were talking about miracles. Miracle. The greatest miracle is you coming in out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Letting God take control of your life. The greatest miracle that God has performed on me was to save me. Was to take my reins and, and start leading and guiding me. That was the greatest miracle God performed on me. You brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light and bringing me home. And all I have to do is endure it to the end. Be not weary and well-doing, for in due season you'll reap if you faint not. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Thirteen, only acknowledge thine iniquity and thou hast, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord. Not only did you do that, you talked about me, but you showed them another. He said, I wish you was either hot or cold, but you was lukewarm. He said, they love me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You treat the strangers just like you treated a dog. And you know, well, they treat dogs. I've used the wrong word. An animal. <laughs> they treat dogs real good now. They treat dogs better than they treat animals now. But the, the humanist. The humanist with the stranger. Now, we have to got to be, do better. Justice and mercy. Even to the strangers. The strangers have a right to a better life just like me and you. We're all equal. There's no big and no little. We are all in God's kingdom. They say the first shall be last and the last first. He gave a, 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 a parable of the people working in the vineyard 12 hours. And they got paid last and they got paid the same. We're all equal. Too much is given, much is required. Remember that. When you see well, that study, God is a just God. He said it's equal. He said it's, it's equal. You're going to get the same reward. God knows what's in you, and he gives you talents according to that. Some got five talents, some got one. He's equal. 
That's how he made you. He made you to be able to own five talents. He made somebody else being able to own one talent. They're still equal to you. You cannot look down on them and thank you because you're an American. And boy, they got another thing going on. It's every day is something chaotic. Who comes to kill, steal, and to destroy? The thief. The devil, the Antichrist. Man, they got women, they fix the deport, taking their uterus out. Man, it, sadistic. It's running the right White House. Let me get, get, get on to 14. My, my wife will get on me. Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I'm married unto you. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Remember, he said, want to be up on the housetop? He said, go, go on the housetop and don't come down because he's going to be taken. He's doing a separation in this hour. You better get it right. You better get your robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. You got any kids, the grandkids, you need to get them saved. You need to get them to Sunday school whenever we can ever get into that. But then you got to be teaching it along the way. We're all called the disciple. And he said, how shall they know that you are my disciple if you have not loved one for another? And you got to keep, because with four and eight, Luke 4 and 8, he anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, the set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's all of our mandates. We're all John the Baptists. John the Baptist had one message, one message of Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus Christ took the baton and as he was on the scene and he started teaching you to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You've got to repent before you can hear the word. God gives us a measure of first to be able to hear that first message. The day you hear my voice, heart, not your heart. He's calling you. Get in line. Come out of the darkness into this marvelous light where you will have life in that more abundantly. He will put you up on high. And it said, whatever you gave up because you got to count the cost. I preached that message. You got to count up the cost. Are you willing to give up everything, even your soul? For the gospel of Jesus Christ, the rich one, one, the rich young ruler, he couldn't do that. He said, "What if you gain the whole world and lose your soul?" A whole bunch of people is getting caught up in that right now, especially up there in Washington D.C., giving up their soul to reap that harvest, to keep in power. Let's see what Lindsey Graham going to do. 15. This is what God would do for you. All of y'all that are hurting. All of y'all that have a hunger and a thirst. God has to deliver. He said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be fed. Beatitudes, the fifth chapter of Matthew. 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Not knowledge and understanding. He will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Everything according to life and godliness is in this book. Everything according to life and godliness is in this book. Is that First Peter 1 and 3? It might be Second Peter. Everything according to life and godliness is in this book. And you've got to know it 
but you got to study to show yourself approved. You got to faith coming by hearing. Romans 10 and 5, 10, 17. Word, faith coming by hearing. Man, you got to know this word. This word will lead and guide you. It's a mirror. It'll shine, shine the light on your sin. That's what it'll do. If you're in the light, your sin is in darkness. You'll see the darkness that's on you. Praise God. 16. And it shall come to pass. Pastors. Uh -oh, pastors. How shall they call on him? Romans 10, 14 and 15. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they here without a preacher. 10 and 14. This is 10 and 15. Romans 10, 14 and 15. And this is 50. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings. Praise God. That's in the New Testament. Je Old, Old Testament, Jeremiah 23 and 4. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, said the Lord. God will take care of his children. I don't care how much pain and suffering you're going through. It's a better day. Weeping may do it for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. If you're in Christ, <sighs> Praise God. Bless his holy name. And Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He got everything in place to, to grow you to strengthen you, to protect you, to show you. He said they have ears and they cannot hear, and they have eyes and they cannot see. Least they can hear and see with their eyes and be converted. The five foolish virgins, they were in the same pot. We got carnal Christians out there running churches. We got carnal Christians out there ruling Christendom. We see how good that how good that went. We we got a, a antichrist in the in the White House because of their foolishness. They didn't have their lamps trimmed. They weren't ready. They were carnal. This carnal minded is death. I wish it was hot or cold. You look warm. Carnal minded God cannot get the glory. In fact. You do him a disservice. You be kicking against the prick like Saul. Paul turned to Paul. Paul who Saul was. He thought he was doing God's service. I'm going to vote for that person that is moral value. That person who, that don't believe in the homosexual, don't believe in the uh, woman's right to choose. They the stuff on stupid on that. God's battle is not yours. That is not your battle. Another man's sin is not your battle. Man, he gave us an example of the woman that's caught in adultery. What if she was a homosexual? Oh, she had an abortion. He let her go. He said, don't condemn her. He said, you without sin cast the first stone. He had. He was out without sin. He let her go. You you need to be worried about social vision. Whatever they did to the least of these, are you putting people in place that is going to make sure that those that are least among us that they might have refuge and solace and that they be taken care of? Because what you they naked, you supposed to clothe them, they hungry, you feed them, thirsty, give them drink. If they're in the hospital, you visit them. If they're in the, the jailhouse, you go into them. 
You worry about these social issues. You cannot change a man. You can compel a man to come in out of darkness, out of his sins, into this marvelous light, compel him, not condemn him into this. And they have a right to this. They have a right to their sins. As long as it don't doesn't tip tap on your footstep, on your feet, or don't hurt you, whatever he does in his house is whatever he does in his house. That's not my that's not my pride. That's God to handle that. I just tell them that's wrong, and that's it. The woman at the wheel, what's the first thing he gave her? was Jesus Christ. He told her about this living water. He didn't tell her about her sins first. He told her about the, the, coming to knowing Jesus and the pardon of her sin. And he told her he knew about her sin. That's it. She went and he, he compelled her. She ran and took, got her, everybody in her whole town. She ran and told about a man that knew everything about me. All my sins. That he got to be the one. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to run and spread this joy. This love that we have in Jesus Christ. 16. And it shall come to pass when you multiply and increase in the land. In those days, said the Lord, they shall say to They shall say no more the ark of the covenant. Of the Lord, neither shall it come to pass to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. We he came to his own, and his own rejected him, and they didn't know about what he tried to explain to them, they could not anthem, they were listening to it, they were trying to disciple, telling us about this book that they know, the Old Testament. They dissected and they interpreted their way. We come a long way, 400 years. The white man has showed us and taught us and tried to explain to us this book, and they didn't do nothing but manipulate us with this book. That's all they did. Now, that's why he says, study to show yourself approve a workman that we needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing this word of truth. They couldn't mm -hmm. rightly divide. They could not because they didn't have the Holy Spirit anyway. Praise God. 18, 17. At that time, they said, call Jerusalem and bring it home. The throne of the Lord and all the nations shall be gathered unto it through the name of the Lord. To Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their evil hearts. Romans 12, 1 through 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what he wants us to do. Casting out imagination. Every high thing. Genesis 22 and 17. Let me do 19. But I say, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a godly heritage of the host of nations. He questioned. He did this guy question. How shall I do that? And I say it, thou shalt call me my father, and shall not turn away from me. That's how you get all this, the blessing. Genesis 22, this is what he gave to Abraham. That's their fathers. That in blessing, I will bless thee, and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And there thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. It said, Wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. This flip, this script. 
from carnal to spiritual, from darkness to light, to flick the switch, flip the script. It's all coming to pass. We're leaving in the last and evil days. All of this is the second message to the future glory. Future glory. We're supposed to be walking in it. We only got seven years, saints, and left my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I forgive them of their sins. I'll heal the land. Praise God. That's all. We have the keys to the kingdom. All we got to do is walk therein. Praise God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word that went forth. We pray that it went forth with power. And that somebody might ask, what must they do to be saved? Delivered, healed, sanctified, and set free. For there's healing. There's deliverance. There's miracles in this word that filled us, Lord Jesus. All we have to do is continue to uphold the blood's name bound of your son, Jesus. And Father God, we still plead the blood of the Lamb on these dying people in cyberspace, wherever the sound of my voice is touching. We ask that you put the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts like you did to the children of Israel. At the day, at the day that uh, uh, Passover, the day of Passover, the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts and COVID nineteen and anything that is not like you cannot enter in, but will pass over, just like it did on Pentecost. And Father God, continue to keep us, strengthen us, and lead and guide us, Lord Jesus. Anoint us for the work that is laid before us. And Father God, we pray that uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. We pray that you send forth labors in your vineyard, that they might reap the harvest. And Father God, these are all blessings we ask in your son Jesus' in mighty name. And we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. And if anybody don't know Jesus and the part that they're seeing right now is the time to give yourself. It's time to have this hunger and this thirst. It's time to love him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. But eternity is a long time. In fact, it ain't no end to eternity. But this life is just a vapor. They're falling all around us. You can't see a thousand a day. And they said it might get worse. No, it's going to get worse. Because these fools don't know how to, uh, to fight the enemy. For just that simple. We got foolish virgins calling themselves Christians. And they're going to get left behind. But I tell you, if you don't know Jesus, now is the time. Say this prayer with me. Father, I have sinned, and I ask for your forgiveness of my sins and my transgressions. And I believe that you died on the cross at Calvary for the remissions of my sins. And on the third day, you arose that I might partake of the tree of life. I believe that in my heart. And I confess that with my mouth, I am saved. Romans 39, you are saved if you say that prayer with me. And if you go to, some people say you get the Holy Ghost. I know I had to go to Camp Pentecost. Backsliders, if you don't know Jesus, say that same prayer. He's married to the backsliders. You heard that. He's waiting on you to come back. The prodigal son was a backslider. 
you see how he treated him. He will treat you the same way. He is no respect of person. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord. If anybody have a donation, send it to Chase Bank on the Temple of Faith of God. We are 501c3. And you can write it off on your taxes and uh, tithes and offering. That's how you keep your finances abreast. People go into financial institutions and and uh, stock markets and all of that. I guess that's good. But I put my trust in God, not man. Man will pay you every time. God is not. Read his word. He'll open the windows of heaven. He'll pour you out a blessing that won't be room enough to receive. And he said, prove it. Well, when your finances get low and, uh, and you pay the tithe, he said, prove it. Lord, where you at? Yeah, I bet you he will, he'll take care of it. Praise God. I know he took, took care of it in my life. I can only speak of what. I can only take you where I've been. And I've been there and done that. And it's, it'll work if you're working. Let's, let's pray us out. Temple of faith of God. This is a place to be loved, uplifted, and taught. Give us a holler if you want to be a member of this church. We're looking for some members. Praise God. To carry this gospel message to a dying and sin sick, dark world. Let us, let us pray us out. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let your sweet communion of your gracious Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide until we return at the appointed time. We'll forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. That is so do you. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. We'll see you next Sunday at 12 noon. If God say the same, have a blessed day and a blessed week. Hallelujah.